Well, today the Republican-led House is in chaos. Lawmakers took the unprecedented step of ousting Speaker Kevin McCarthy from office nine months after he won the gavel in a 15-round floor fight. With no permanent speaker and no clear frontrunner, what happens next? The director of the Marquette Law School, Paul Charles Franklin, is back with us. Welcome back. Good it's to see you, been Charles. been a while. Good to be here. Did this really surprise anybody? I mean, I, he couldn't win here. I, I think that's largely right. The, the threat had been there since McCarthy, you know, only became speaker after, what was it, 15, 15 rounds right. of voting. And any single member could call to replace him, and that's what happened this week. So I think in that sense, the threat had always been there. I think this got exacerbated last week, though, when we had this fight about the funding the government, and at the last minute, they came up with a 45-day extension of funding. But it raised all of the issues that this uh, anti-McCarthy group had been fighting him over and I think was just sort of the tipping point for it. Um, you remember, he got 208 Republican votes to keep him as Speaker. Just eight Republicans voted to remove him, but that falls short of the majority. Your caucus is that closely divided. It just takes a few people to tip it over. Well, reaching out to the Democrats was the straw that <clears throat> broke the camel's back. And the House has a razor-thin majority, as you just said. So if he hadn't done that, and then there was a government yeah. shutdown, is there a chance the Republicans could have lost control of the House altogether? I, I think there, it is sort of a no-win situation. It's a very tight majority. But what McCarthy could do to win votes is to do something with Democrats to get some Democrats on board. He actually got that with the spending resolution. Most Democrats voted for that. Um, but it's the cooperation with the other party that dooms you within the Republican Party. And so it was a no-win situation. If he could have reached out to Democrats to save the speakership, he probably would have lost a good many more Republican votes precisely because he was colluding with the enemy. So who's next in line, do we think? Oh, that's a good question. There are two prominent ones, uh, Steve Scalise from Louisiana and Jim Jordan from Ohio. Scalise is currently the number two, but a McCarthy ally. And so the question is going to, and, and for that matter, Jim Jordan was a McCarthy ally. Won't they face the exact same dynamic that McCarthy faced? Absolutely, and a different problem. If they appease the eight people that voted to remove McCarthy, do they lose the some of the more moderate members who don't want the party to go that far? So it's going to be a very delicate political thing. Maybe it'll get resolved quicker than I think, uh, but I think we could see a long, prolonged uh, battle over it as you try to trade off what those eight members want and what the rest of the caucus wants. It's like a civil war within the party. It is, and it's a very bitter one in which normal negotiations don't really work. There's nothing you offer to the eight that will bring them over, but on the other hand, the eight are demanding things that the huge majority of the party doesn't want. So how do you deal with that? Oh, and remember that spending bill runs out in the middle of November, so right. we could see that chapter replayed in just... Uh, it's a little less than 45 and, days. And if now. there's no speaker, what happens? Well, that's interesting times we live in, isn't it? it really is. We don't know, right? Yeah. Is this, do you think, affect the Republicans next year? I think the question is if they resolve it and sort of muddle along, I think not so bad. But uh, it raises a question of the party's brand. Is this a party that can govern? Because right now the House majority cannot pass its own bills. That was part of the backlog of leading up to the uh, budget vote. And so if your majority, which granted is very small, very narrow, but Nancy Pelosi dealt with a similarly narrow majority and managed to hold that party together. Now with the Republicans, you can't hold it together. You can't pass your own legislative priorities, let alone deal with getting anything through the Senate. But you ju it's an internal problem that the majority can't pass legislation. Wow. Stay tuned. Yeah.